Great to see you, Scott. Uh, it's hard to believe, but your one-year mission is drawing to a close. Uh, it's certainly been an eventful year for you and Mikhail Kornienko. And in looking back, what would you consider to be the most important accomplishments of this year in space, and perhaps the high and low points for you personally? You know, our time here has demonstrated um, not only the capability for, for us to stay in space for a long time and, and to do well, but also the capability of the ground teams uh, to support um, us and the systems that keep us alive and the, and the resupply and do this in a way that is you know, forward thinking towards a potential flight to Mars. When your mission was all about gathering very important biomedical data in that regard, do you consider yourself in Mikhail pathfinders of sorts? Sure. Um, I, I guess you could use that term, but I think we all are. You know, uh, you know, all the crew members over the last 15 years, and and even those that came before that. Um, you know, flying in space is a uh, is a, a process. Uh, exploring space is a process that you take step by step. Scott, your career has spanned missions to serve as the Hubble Space Telescope. You commanded the flight of Barbara Morgan, in which she fulfilled the legacy of the teacher in space program, and you've conducted groundbreaking work on the International Space Station. How would you sum up your contribution to human spaceflight and ultimately the legacy you will leave after you return to Earth? You know, I've been really fortunate, like you mentioned, to have a, uh, a, a spaceflight career um, that has had uh, some variety to it. Um, like you mentioned. Looking ahead to landing, uh, this will be your second return from the International Space Station in a Soyuz spacecraft. What are you looking forward to the most that was new to you five years ago during your first descent back to the planet? Yeah, the Soyuz is a pretty exciting ride back to Earth, um, no question about it. And, uh, you know, people that have flown in it previously will try to prepare you for it, but. Uh, I think uh, nothing really can until you've actually, you know, been there yourself and experienced it. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's definitely an eye opener, and, and uh, you know, once you get past the the initial, uh, um, I don't know, shock of the drogue chute opening and all the pyrotechnics of various, uh, you know, firing for various reasons. Certainly, the, you know, the coming through the atmosphere or into the atmosphere, the the plasma that's uh, you know right right next to your head versus feet in front of you in the space shuttle, it definitely gets your attention. It's so you know so much fun for me that I had said uh, you know after my last flight that if I if I would have you know hated being in space for six months, I would have done it all o over again just for that last 20 minutes in the Soyuz. It's that uh, it's that type of an experience. Scott, the inevitable question when you touch down in Kazakhstan. Uh... What will be the first things you'll want to do, the first foods you'll want to eat, your thoughts as you emerge from a year aboard a confined environment? You know, it's interesting. I don't, I, I, I look forward to like fresh food, like a salad, believe it or not, stuff like that. Um, but specific things um, is not as important as like the experience. I, I actually uh, look forward to sitting at a table um, and just relaxing uh, and having a meal with friends and family um, when you don't have to worry about your spoon or your fork or your food floating away and, uh, you know, dealing with the overhead of that. So it's more the uh, that kind of experience that I'm looking through as far as, you know, food is concerned. It's more of the, uh, you know, more the experience than, than, than what I've actually not had to be able to eat up here or could get on Earth. Um, the other things I'm looking forward to is, uh, you know, seeing the sky from from below and, uh, you know, air that is uh, fresh and, you know, a breeze and a sun, the sun on my face, um, running water, those kind of things, people. And finally, Scott, uh, without a doubt, uh, this mission will take a prominent place in the history books when it's complete. Uh, from your perspective, what do you think will be the touchstone, the history-making moment, the legacy of this one-year mission? You know, it's hard for me to say right now because I think a lot of, uh, you know, what we're doing here is, uh, 
cadmium because of the science. So um, I'm hoping, I'm hopeful, and I think a lot of other people are, is that we're gonna we're gonna learn a lot of um, information that will help us eventually, you know, continue our, our path towards Mars. You know, Misha and I are only, you know, one uh, one data point really, or two data points, and you know, anyone who's a scientist is going to tell you, you know, you need a lot more, uh, a lot more n, a lot more numbers um, to draw specific conclusions. But I'm hoping what we find is our areas that we need to investigate further, and we could say that, you know, after so many months, we've seen this thing from a, you know, physiological or or psychological aspect, and we need to take a, a much closer look at this, uh, you know, before we we travel further beyond low Earth orbit for longer periods of time. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, JSC Public Affairs Station. We are now resuming operational audio communications.